Hi, everyone. Welcome to our Make to Connect webinar. We are collaborating with Tech for Good Canada um, and Ontario Tech University on a project called Make to Connect, Fostering Pro-Social Digital Youth Through Making. Next slide. So um, we have a, a, a whole session planned for you today outlining how you can get involved with your students, or if you're um, a youth between the ages of 13 and 18, you can get involved um, just in your own, on your own time. Um, what we're going to do in this webinar is we'll introduce ourselves, then we'll talk about the challenge and social media activism. Um, we will go over the project timeline and uh, we'll talk about the prizes that we have available and how the uh, submissions will be judged, and then we'll open it up for any questions that you might have. So um, I'm Dr. Jeanette Hughes, and I'm a professor and a Canada Research Chair at the Faculty of Education at Ontario Tech U. And um, I am the principal investigator on this project, which is funded by the federal government of Canada. Um, and Caroline, Caroline Isotier is the director of Tech for Good Canada, and you'll meet her in just a few minutes. Dr. Jennifer Lafiere is a co-investigator and she is uh, the director of the mental health in the, in the digital age. Uh, lab, which is also in the Faculty of Education at Ontario Tech. We also have Kelly Wong with us. She's our junior project manager and Dr. Laura Morrison, who's our senior project manager. So um, as a group, we were collectively talking about uh, some of the challenges that we're facing in terms of mental health and, and youth and the isolation, especially during the pandemic that, that youth have felt. Um, but even pre-pandemic, um, there has been a rise of um, what SHRC, the, the funding body that, that is, is contributing to the funding to support this project, identified as emer an emerging asocial society. Um, the nature of work has changed. Um, now that we're doing more online, the nature of connection has changed and it's leading to uh, more anxiety and depression among youth um, who feel that they have a lack of purpose and motivation. And I'm sure you've all heard about the um, TikTok challenges that have been going viral that have been targeting schools. So a lot of antisocial or asocial behavior is happening currently um, online. So our response is to focus on hope and possibility. And what we want to do is improve the well-being of youth by focusing on three things. The first thing is critical digital citizenship, getting students to uh, engage in pro-social, uh, positive ways online, recognizing their digital footprint, um, and just generally being um, good uh, digital citizens. We also want to contribute to the empowerment of youth by allowing them and encouraging them to, to use their voices and to become an influence in their communities, whether those communities are local communities, um, affinity groups that they belong to, or whether these are, uh, you know, voices for change on a global stage. And then the third thing we are focusing on with this project is the development of global competencies. So the encouragement of collaboration to remove some of that isolation that I talked about on the previous slide. Also problem solving, how to identify um, a problem and then be part of the change or be part of the solution to that problem. And we're also focusing on critical thinking and creativity and how we can use those things to engage online in ways that um, will help society rather than hinder it. So I'm going to turn things over now to my, my colleague, Caroline, who's going to talk to you a little bit more about the actual challenge. 
Thank you, Jeanette. I hope everyone can hear me all right. Okay, let me just first choose the um, choose the slide. Sorry for the delay. So yes, I'm Caroline Isotier, head of Tech for Good uh, Canada. We're a nonprofit, um, and let me just share now. Should come up. Yes. Uh, so and let me just launch the. Uh, there we go. All right. Sorry, it's kind of slow. Okay. Um, so yes, just to preface our our our, our um, innovative approach here with Jeanette's team, um, I I do want to preface that um, you know um, at Tech for Good Canada we we sort of. Uh, like in uh, social media and the web in general to the wild west era so it's um it's a land of cowboys and cute girls and just made the best uh the strongest one wins so there's really no regulation in this new environment that's only maybe 20 25 years old um and our reaction so far has been to be sort of mesmerized by this, 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 the newness of it, and not to have really time to have a critical um, look at it. And so at Tech for Good Canada, that's what we try to do, is take a critical look at um, social media. And in addition to you know, what we've been saying for um, about two years now, there's been revelations in the Wall Street Journal and on 60 Minutes uh, from a whistleblower out of Facebook that shows that Facebook had internal research uh, showing uh, the negative impact on teen girls of um, Instagram use. So it was making them depressed uh, because of the body uh, image uh, 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 images that they were seeing and always comparing themselves to perfect or even and not even realistic uh, bodies. And then there's also um, been reports revealed that um, Facebook um, lets drug cartels and human traffickers really use its network without really reacting. So in our in this efforts, we are not saying everything is perfect on social media, far from it, but we're trying to take an innovative approach to fight uh, some of the negative aspects that do exist there today. And that probably a lot of US teachers are weary of and are sort of um, more likely to avoid than to, uh, than to migrate to uh, because you've seen some of the distraction that it causes among children and, uh, and other issues. Um, so at Tech for Good Canada, we seek to educate uh, youth, parents, and citizens on how digital media can be um, a force for good and not only for disruption of our societal fabric. Um, and also to advocate for privacy, for diversity, and for just care in the development of tech. Because again, this is a brand new industry, you know, that's run by basically cowboys, and there's there's no sheriff right now really um, managing what's going on there. Um, and so we're trying to 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 take the best uh, from what is there today, uh, in addition to, of course, this critical digital literacy or citizenship that Jeanette mentioned, which is the education part on how to be aware when you're using uh, online medium. So the, we launched this idea of uh, challenging young people, so basically teenagers, high school students, um, and their teachers to use social media what we call for good, or at least for, for to talk about a cause that they care about. And the way we set it up is we created accounts on social media called the We Stop Scrolling. So we're focusing on two social media, TikTok and Instagram. So here you see the two nascent accounts that we, we've been developing there for about a month. And the way we're, um, we're publishing on these accounts is we're researching 
what young act Canadian activists are saying about various causes. You know, we went from the uh, LGBTQ cause to climate change to Black Lives Matter to, uh, of course, mental health uh, to body image. So we we tried to have an open mind and um, look at all sorts of causes uh, that we could identify, and we identified, you know, some of the influencers in Canada that were generally in their 20s, uh, 20s or 30s, and we have been posting some of what they've been posting to show, to sort of get the account started and show what, um, how some young people are really using these, uh, these tools uh, to talk about issues that they care about and not only to, to scroll, uh, you know, at cat uh, videos or hypersexual content or hyper violent content. Um, so this is what the spreadsheet that we've been um, adding to with uh, Kelly here looks like. So I won't go into that because that is a bit too dense. Uh, what I wanted to show you is just some examples of what this youth um, activism looks like. So it is going to be TikTok and Instagram content. So bear in mind that, you know, this is the, the mode of expression there, and it can be different from what you're used to. Uh, but it is definitely, definitely the mode of expression that teens today are used to and are really um, basically seeing most of their mo most of the time that they're online so if they're not seeing tv they're not seeing print um, that's what they're seeing um, yeah so uh, what we since we chose these two media tiktok and instagram uh, because basically most of us here have more familiarity with instagram it's been around longer than tiktok that was only released in 2018 so that is a little over three years old. Um, but um, as probably a lot of you teachers know, teenagers today are really uh, flocking to TikTok. So TikTok is really the new social media uh, of, of the, 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 the new flavor basically. And so um, we, we wanted to be on those two uh, media. And so we, we're, we've been comparing how uh, activists uh, behave on one media versus the other. So we'll share some of that so that you know the codes on each of these media and how they're different. Um, and uh, again, we'll talk about the various causes and we compared, yeah, how they were on Instagram. So I'll, I'll, go, into, um, I'll go into those examples after this. So I'm going to have to um, leave my presentation and hopefully, uh, you can see, can you see an Instagram page here or am I still in my presentation? Yes, great. All right. So here I am using Instagram on a laptop computer. Normally, as you know, Instagram is an app that you use on a smartphone, but it is possible to look at Instagram on a desktop computer. So this is the address where you would find, uh, we stop scrolling on Instagram. So this is what our account looks like today. Um, and then hopefully you can also see this. Can you see that I'm on TikTok here? I don't know if you can tell. Yes, okay. So this is the address for the We Stop Scrolling account on TikTok. And so this is how, if you didn't want to install those apps on your phone, this is how you would look at uh, the We Stop Scrolling account, for example, or any other account. I have to say though, that you have to be logged in to access this, this page. So you would have to use either one of the class We Stop Scrolling accounts we can create for you or some other personal account just to view this page online because it is going to ask you to log in. Um, so um, our accounts are, are just for, for now, we created a few TikToks. One is with Kelly, another one is with uh, Kevin to try and explain the challenge in TikTok style to, to basically young people um, but um, that, I, that I could show you later. But I want to go to the examples of the activists right now. Uh, so one of them is, I think if I go back, I should be able to see where I was before. 
four, yes. So one of them is called J. Roy Macogas. Um, and so he's an, uh, a Cree, he's an indigenous um, person. And he is not, he's in his 20s, 30s. So he already has maybe 30s. He already has two children. <laughs> so, um, but he is quite popular. So as you can see, he has 553,000 followers on TikTok and 6.4 million likes. That means 6.4 million people reacted to his videos. Um, for those of you who don't know TikTok at all, TikTok is a video creation tool basically today with a lot of, um, a lot of help to, for you to create these videos. It's a really actually a super sophisticated uh, tool to create videos to, and you can add text, you can add music, you can add, so you can shoot anything, but you can also add still visuals to the video. So it's just a very elaborate uh, video creation tool. Um, and um, so he's, so this is just to compare, just for you to get a flavor of what, um, and I consider him an activist for a cause because he basically talks about indigenous culture, um, masculine, um, men or boys on TikTok and Instagram tend to be more on the humor side than women. So he uses humor a lot. Uh, it's not always humorous, but he will generally have a humorous tone. Um, and another point is that, so as you can see, these are his followers on uh, TikTok. And if we go on Instagram, he has much less. So he only only has 4,700 and here we saw it was 553,000. So there's multiple reasons for that. First of all, for someone who wants to, the tone on TikTok is going to be more humorous, uh, more lighthearted, um, even though, again, there is this hyper-violent, hyper-sexual content as well. But in general, it'll just be more of a one-person uh, tone. So it'll be one person talking to their audience. Uh, so very individualistic, you know, um, uh, pushing people to exhibit themselves online. And um, Instagram is much more about pretty pictures. If you compare his account on Instagram, it's much more uh, images that are, you know, um, uh, about the tools, you know, the, the, the the what he what he yeah he went apparently hunting um uh things like that so it's much more of a visual but an uh, aesthetic visual media and uh, we all know about this and that's why there's issues with young girls who are bombarded with these images of perfect um women's lives you know in very uh, luxurious settings or whatever, doing perfect yoga poses, that is really the story of Instagram. Whereas TikTok is more about spontaneous, even though it's not really spontaneous uh, video creation. And they're very short. Until recently, they could not be longer than one minute. And so now they can be three minutes. <laughs> so it's really a very short um, consumption media. And the other point is that it's extremely viral. So we, when we say viral, uh, we mean that the number of followers on an account can grow much more quickly on TikTok than on Instagram uh, because of the way that TikTok is designed. So when you create a TikTok account, you don't have to follow anyone. Uh, whereas on Instagram, you have to follow uh, people. And that's when, when you follow those accounts that you will see whatever they published on TikTok. Um, it'll start showing you videos right from the start so that the algorithm can tell what, where you like or where you don't like, where, how, how quickly you scroll through a video. And so that's why TikTok, you can have a, an account on TikTok with zero followers. And if your content gets noticed, people react to it and people start liking it, then you will have followers very quickly. And of course, you can imagine the addictive side of something that has been designed like that for a young person who wants fame and who you know, can easily find fame with such a, the way this tool has been designed. Um, 
but it's also good for us, for our account, because we're starting from scratch. And so we're slowly getting followers um, with this idea of re reposting those who post for a cause. Uh, there's another influencer called Nicole Zajak. So here you see her TikTok account where she has 37,000 followers. And she is, um, well, as you can see, not often very dressed, but still advocating for, I guess, what they call body positivity. So, um, you know, uh, uh, body image as you know uh, the, the the female image as not always being this perfect uh, thin um, person and just being you know a natural natural body um, and here is her Instagram account uh, oops that's not her that's the next one so she should be here let me see if I get to her Okay, yeah, so Nicole Zazak, this is her Instagram account. And here, she, so she is, um, depending on the theme, you notice that as soon as we talk about body image, she is much more present on Instagram. She is also, I think, in her late 20s, um, uh, but, and generally, Instagram skews a bit older, slightly older than TikTok. Uh, so she has a lot more followers on Instagram. Um, and on Instagram, again, you know, generally, uh, you know, beautiful poses of herself and her boyfriend and her friends, uh, but it's all in the name of positive uh, body po positivity. For example, in this post, she explains how she broke up with her Apple Watch because it was making her too anxious because her Apple Watch was um, following her uh, physical activity. And she was saying she had become too addicted to um, all these prompts that she was getting from the watch to be more physically active. And she decided to, uh, you know, stop that and just be physically active when she wanted to. So that's an example of, you know, a form of activism, um, you know, advocating for just a healthier uh, lifestyle, not being focused so much on uh, losing weight or working out uh, constantly. And uh, another example I wanted to show you. So again, you can see the difference between her TikTok account and her Instagram account. She's, she does not post the same thing. So I encourage you to go check these out if you want to understand um, this world where uh, most teens live today and, uh, and how it can influence them. Um, and so actually that's our account. And uh, here is a third example, and she is an indigenous, but also, um, yeah, indigenous um, artist, but also advocate for the indigenous culture. And she does uh, uh, jewelry uh, beading. So she will feature her jewelry quite a bit, especially on Instagram. So this is her Instagram account, which is really more about her jewelry. And so she has 34,000 followers there, but on her TikTok account, um, there it is. She has 87,000 followers. So she is, since we're not talking about body image, as you notice, she is more present on TikTok than Instagram. And uh, here amidst some of the bead, bead work that she, she shows, she did very compelling um, videos explaining uh, residential schools recently. So she did this residential school awareness quiz, I think. <clears throat> I think I'll try to show you that one. I'm not sure that you can hear the sound though. Um, I, would, I would have had to share the sound before. No, I'm not sure you can, you can hear it, but you can see it. So she challenges young people to answer her questions before she does. So she, so this is just, you know, as you can see, um, an explanation of um, how residential schools were, were set up. And all this in a little over one minute, right? So uh, very, very uh, short, uh, fast communication, but still, you know, getting some information, important information across. 
Um, so I think those were all my examples. I will go back to the, um, to the presentation. Uh, but uh, so if you're curious about, you know, having sort of a curated view of TikTok and Instagram, where, one where you don't have to be lost amidst, you know, everything that's there, which is basically the best and the worst that humanity can produce since there's no filter. Um, you can follow the We Stop Scrolling accounts and you'll see what we repost um, while we wait for some students to create some content and post that, uh, that content as well. Um, but we want to inspire students because we do recognize that when you're you know, 13 to 18, advocating for a cause is maybe not the first thing you have in mind, uh, but maybe you can be inspired by a young adult uh, who is uh, doing that. Uh, so let's continue with the presentation. Oops, actually I lost the presentation. Let me just start again. <laughs> there we go. All right, so this was, this was, these were my examples. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm clicking on the link. Okay, all right, so let's see, I won't click. Maybe I'll use this. So yeah, just to recap, what is the social media world that the young people live in today? It's all about individualism and exhibition. So exhibiting yourself, basically. Um, hashtags rule. So there's no, um, the way you, you follow, you know, basically you follow trends or topics based on hashtags. So we started you know, searching under, for example, body positivity, climate change, climate crisis, climate justice. This is how uh, you find content and this is how people publish. So there's no chapters, there's no, it's all uh, hashtag based. Um, it's basically, these are global media. We have, you know, it's a very difficult exercise uh, uh, that we've been going through with Kelly is to try and find the Canadian content amidst these uh, global platforms because it's not, the notion of geography is not present. It's global by default. So um, to bring it back to the local is, takes an effort. You're basically fighting, fighting the design of the platform if you wanna be local. Um, the calls to action are called um, influencers will say, can you duet this? So a duet is you take an existing TikTok and you can feature yourself. It's a split screen. And so you're commenting basically on that other TikTok. There's a lot of um, invitation to pay and support these influencers through PayPal, links, whatever. And of course, reposting is another call to action. Um, oh, yes. And I'm sorry, I didn't link that. But for example, there's a young man who is uh, uh, advocating, uh, talking about the climate and some of the comments on some of these TikToks. So they may not have a huge audience, but there can be hundreds of comments of very informed uh, comments on a TikTok, for example, on climate change or even on any other topics. So it's it's you know, despite the, the very uh, futile aspect of these, these media, there can be real conversations going on, um, you know, um, behind, behind these, these posts. So this is just to remind you of the links. So how can you get involved with your students? So basically you can tell them about it by showing them the poster that we made. And we also made some videos, um, so, and they're the very short videos, so they should be easily digestible by your students. So there's, there's one video with uh, Kelly who did a TikTok and we did also another TikTok with Kevin that explains um, the, the challenge basically. Next thing to do is we would like to get to know them better and know what causes are important to them because uh, we sort of, it's our projection of the causes that we, we started following. And there may be quite local causes that we don't know about and we would love to get feedback. So here's the link to a survey that you can please uh, submit to your students. It's very short, it's four or five questions. It's uh, very easy to, to do. They don't need to give us their contact information. We just want to get 
a little bit more information on what they might be, the issues they might be interested in. And then the, the, the next step is to ask them to follow the We Stop Scrolling account on TikTok or Instagram. And again, and of course, for you to follow as a class and we'll, next slide will explain how you can follow as a class. If you don't want to, you know, <laughs> uh, put your students on TikTok or Instagram if they're not there, or of course, for privacy reasons, whatever you, you, you do not wish to use the personal account, we can help you create a We Stop Scrolling account with your class name that you would provide us. And so that that would be a real educational tool that you could use in the classroom context only. Um, and then what we would love um, for, for, for you to work on, um, rather than just you know, dive into the creation of TikToks or visuals for Instagram immediately, is for you to work with your students on how they might present, well, first of all, what causes they might care about and how they might want to present the arguments or their points of view. And we are encouraging with this challenge. Uh, so we're fighting the anti-social design of these platforms by encouraging students to post as a group, so of two or more, so that you could have them work in groups on this, on you know, just thinking, what can I say in one minute that is going to say what we're, you know, after some discussion, which is a good part, what we're concerned about and um, yeah, and how we might portray that, you know, maybe we have a few lines to, to explain how we're gonna go about it, et cetera. So it's a real, you know, maker, uh, you know, a chance to make something that has a real educational value um, behind it. And, um, and yeah, join us in training sessions and the creation of these actual TikToks. So you're welcome to start, you know, in your classroom beforehand, but we also have set up, as you can see later with, uh, with Kelly, who is going to go over the, the timeline, um, we have set up uh, days uh, on Saturdays where you can uh, join us remotely uh, with your students and be um, mentored by uh, both some young activists that we're connected with and some Bachelor of Education students who will um, help you and your stu students <clears throat> work on TikToks or Instagrams uh, during that day. And if, if you prefer using the class account. So now I'll pass it over to Kelly and Kelly, let me know when I need to switch slides. Awesome. Thank you so much, Caroline. Hi, everyone. My name is Kelly and I'm the junior project manager and I'll be sharing some details about the project's timeline. So today's teacher information session is the first step of the project. And then in less than a month on November 8th, we're going to be hosting a teacher PL session. PL stands for professional learning. And this session will mainly go over what digital citizenship and activism are and how they intersect. Um, it will also go over what digital citizenship represents, so how it's evolved over the past five to 10 years in both the K-12 context and also in society as a whole. Um, and the session will provide, uh, it will also explore civic engagement through social media and how to help students develop the skills that they need to navigate their digital worlds, both for consumption and also production of online content. The goal is just to help students understand how social media can be used for pro-social purposes like digital activism and civic engagement. Also on November 8th, we would like to help teachers connect this content to curriculum and to learn about some activities that could be implemented in grades seven to 12. And we'll be asking those participating in the research study to do a pre-project survey before the presentation. Uh, next up, we've got our kickoff event on November 27th, and I'll talk more about that day later on. After November 27th, the youth are off and they'll be creating and posting on social media. During this time, they'll be mentored by students of Ontario Tech University's Bachelor of Education program. And then two weeks after the kickoff, we're gonna be having our wrap up event on December 11th. It's gonna be a really, really fun event. We will be giving out some Indigo and Decathlon gift cards. And then right after that, we're doing post interviews with those participating in the research project. Uh, next slide, please. 
thank you. Uh, so some more information on the kickoff event on November 27th, which is entirely online. The day starts at 10 o'clock in the morning. After some introductions, we'll hear a presentation about some of social media's impacts on mental health. And then we'll do an introduction on the We Stop Scrolling Challenge, followed by presentations from youth activists. They'll talk about their experiences with social media activism and why they're passionate towards social causes. And then after that, there's going to be an activity to do with some extra discussion and work time scheduled towards the end. Uh, next slide, please. So we're asking anyone interested in attending any of the events later on to pre-register. So this includes the teacher PL session on November 8th, the kickoff on November 27th, and the wrap up on December 11th. And you can pre-register by clicking the link attached to each of the dates. Um, and I'll now pass it back to Caroline to talk about judging criteria and prizes. All right, thank you, Kelly. Yes, so as we were telling you, the objective of this innovative research is to uh, encourage um, these, um, these types of behaviors. Um, of course, we'll be judging on originality and innovation. So, you know, you can see the more detail when you click um, on the visual of the, um, uh, to the right, where we, you know, we're gonna have a, a different levels of originality. But we're also going to be uh, awarding more points when it's a common effort versus an individual effort to encourage, again, um, social behavior. Um, we're going to be looking at uh, how much critical engagement the, um, the, art, the artifact um, created. So how many comments, uh, you know, was this, did this provoke reactions um, in, in the audience and how much? And then we're encouraging, you know, uh, BIPOC representation. So there are points given to that just to make this as diverse as, as possible. Um, oh yes, and the final point is so that this is not slacktivism or just, you know, activism online that doesn't lead to any real world action. Uh, we are um, awarding points when there's a real, uh, call to action in the real world um, in the online production, uh, you know, to really connect with the real world and uh, again, social or uh, activist behavior. Yeah, so these are the prizes that Kelly was mentioning, uh, $25 gift cards. Um, here below you have a, also a link to an article on the Tech for Good Canada site that you know, has all this information plus uh, the details of the prizes. Uh, so there's gonna be, um, it's a total $600 value uh, split between some prizes for teachers. Uh, so the gift cards are for you to choose between this uh, sporting goods store or Indigo. Um, and so there'll be, I think if I recall well, uh, about eight, uh, gift cards for teachers, if I'm not mistaken, and then 16 gift cards for students, uh, teachers who get involved with their class. Maybe you want to also do TikToks, but if you just get involved with your class, then uh, you can you can be selected to to win a prize. And I guess that's it. If you have any questions, we're happy to answer them. This is all our social media links. Uh, in addition to, of course, our, our websites, which are uh, uh, Steam 3D Maker Lab and then techforgoodcanada.org. If I could just finish up by mentioning um, something about the research component. Um, yes. Kelly mentioned that um, we would like to do interviews or focus groups with the research participants. I want to um, um, make a distinction here that you can definitely participate without being part of the research. Um, and we'll just be inviting people who want to be part of the research um, to identify themselves. And um, But anybody can participate. Um, but we would be giving more information out about the research. Or if you have questions about the research aspect, definitely reach out um, and contact one of us. Thanks for joining us. Do we have any questions before we leave? Because we're right on time. I mean, we have uh, 10 more minutes, I think, if anyone has, has questions. You can maybe either put them in the chat or 
um, I don't think you can speak up. I can actually, I can see, I can, I, uh, I can allow you to speak. So I've allowed uh, the attendees there to speak if they wish. And uh, you're, you're welcome to speak up if you'd like to. But I don't know if you caught the whole presentation. Maybe you arrived at the end. So you'll be able to watch it again. All right, no questions in particular.